The cab driver, Mr. Patel, was shot in the head with his own gun. The killer left it in Mr. Patel's cab after he stole his money. Who did you identify as the killer? That man there at the defense table, Stephen Gerard. Keep it together, Steve. The jury's watching. I don't want them saying you look upset. I'm sorry. It's hard. I can't breathe. I didn't kill anyone. Detective, tell us why you think Mr. Gerard was the killer. A bouncer at this club saw Gerard get into the victim's cab at 1 a.m. The taxi meter showed that Gerard was dropped off a block from his apartment at 1.23 a.m. That's exactly when a convenience store clerk near the murder scene heard a gunshot and called the police. You arrested Mr. Gerard at his apartment the next day? Yes. He waived his rights and he admitted that he had gotten into a fight with the driver about the fare. We searched his place for the money he took from Mr. Patel, but it was gone. He sent you just to tell me that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Steve, meet Lisa Cruz, one of our investigators. Ron says you only took this case to avoid small talk at the Christmas party. I did it to stop an injustice. Missing the Christmas party was just a bonus. Wait, you can't put me back in jail. I didn't do anything. Pipe down, Mr. Gerard. Your lawyer isn't here for your pre-trial conference, so I'm moving your trial to May. May? I can't stay in jail until May. Please don't do this. Give me a second. Your Honor, hold on. May I speak to this man? Do what you want. You've got 30 seconds. What's your story? They say I shot a cab driver, but I didn't. See, my friends and I went out to celebrate after midterms. Midterms? You're a college student? My friends met some women, and they ditched me. I didn't have a ride back home from the club, so I called a cab. I didn't realize until later that I lost my wallet at the club and I couldn't pay. Then what happened? He turned into an alley and he pulled a gun on me. I ran for my life. Where'd you get the bruises? Jail. I keep getting jumped in the yard. I I've been in three months. My mom lives in Pittsburgh and she didn't have the money to post my bill to come out here again. Let me see this guy's file. Why? It's not your case. Just give me the file. No witness statement, no forensic evidence. You got this kid on a murder charge, but you have no case. Time's up. Your Honor, Mr. Gerard just fired his old lawyer. I'm taking his case. When's his trial set for? Friday. Great. Based on these facts, it's a one-day case, so uh, we'll keep that trial date. If you take December 22nd, it ends when court closes at 5 p.m. I'm not keeping a jury here over the holiday break. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Hale, check your exhibits with the clerk. The client looks pretty nervous. Well, they should. DA hasn't met her burden. And when she rests, I'm moving to dismiss. If the judge doesn't grant it, I'll rest and go to closings. See, juries never want to hang around before the holidays, so we'll be out of here by five. Mm. Steve will be home on a plane back to Pittsburgh to see his mom. Mr. Nicholson, you're cross. I know we all want to get out of here for the holidays, so I'll be brief. My client's prints weren't found on the gun, were they? No. And no one saw him shoot the driver? No. And you didn't find any money or anything to support your theory that this was a robbery? Now, isn't it possible the reason there wasn't any money in the cab is because Mr. Patel just started to shift and didn't have any cash on hand? Or he did, and your client stole it. What's that, a theory? Basically, what you've got against my client is Jack. In fact, Your Honor, the DA's case is so weak, we're moving for a judgment of acquittal now. Ms. Hale? Great to see you, Councilman. Hey, go easy on the booze is your... Bill, Bill, grab some duck. Eva? Tell the bartenders to save the dome perignon for potential clients. They can give the DA's group. They'll be able to tell which is which by their suits. How does Ron manage to juggle a full caseload and plan this party? He must sleep in his office. No, he sleeps with the party planner, which is why he gets such a good deal and all of this. 
I just have to finish one last thing. Go see if we qualify for the Dom. Captain, great to see you. So, what do you hear about the Dunn case? You guys gonna make an arrest? Come on, Ron, you know I can't talk about that. I know, I know. Have fun. An hour, you're talking his head off. <laughs> I love the Christmas party. You get to see old friends, bury the hatchet, get new clients. Is Tom here yet? Still in court. He says it's a dead bang acquittal. He'll be here soon. Yeah, we'll see. Tom will do anything to avoid schmoozing and small talk. Oh, great. Judge Madison's here. You know we invite all the judges, right? Yes, we invite them. I just don't expect them all to show up. Hey. I'm glad she's here. Really? She's the one with issues. I agree with Mr. Nicholson. Your case is awfully thin, Miss Hale. Your Honor, I had to take it easy. Let the man finish. By law, looking at the evidence in the light most favorable to you, Miss Hale, I don't see how a reasonable jury could convict Mr. Nicholson's right. You have Jack. We did have Jack, but now we have a great case. This morning, an eyewitness showed up. You, you can't drop an eyewitness on the defense now. He just came forward this morning. <laughs> yeah. You don't find that a little odd or suspicious? <sighs> Where's the discovery? What the hell is this? There isn't even a witness statement. He didn't give one. He didn't speak to the police. He spoke to me. I'm not obligated to create discovery. Can you tell me what he said? He saw your client shoot the driver dead. Is that clear enough for you? Your Honor, the defense needs time to prepare for this witness uh, we need to request a, a continuance not a chance now look at i told you when you took this case this is a one-day trial now the da will present their new witness you will cross him i will get this case to the jury by four if they're like most juries before a holiday we'll have a verdict by five understand Excuse me. I, I didn't order a baby. He looks like Justice Scalia. I found him on a table in the evidence prep room. What? It's been abandoned, Ron. <sighs> Take him to the back. I'll get security to check tapes so we can figure out who left him. I can't go back to jail. Take it easy, all right? You're still walking out of here. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Attorney-client meeting. I think there's another one on the fifth floor. What did the discovery tell you? That the eyewitness's name is Nick Allen, and he's got no criminal record. Now, when a witness shows up like this, that's all the DA has to give us. Now, usually we've got months to investigate this guy. This time, we've got five minutes. How can there be a witness? I didn't do this. Don't worry. We'll handle it. Call the office. Have them set up a trial command center and send us the equipment we'll need. How are you going to cross-examine a witness when you don't know who he is or what he's going to say? Carefully. Steve's innocent, right? That means this guy, Nick Allen, is either lying or he's just wrong. I have to show the jury that. I'm not going home, am I? This case goes to jury in three hours. You will be on a plane home tonight. I promise. 100% innocent. to help Tom, his trial just blew up. Ron, you have to tell the police about this baby. We have clients here. If one of them abandoned a baby, they broke the law. We can't turn them in without at least talking to them. Here's the security footage. No sign of a baby. We don't know this was a crime. 
What else could it be? A mistake? Losing your car in a parking garage is a mistake. This is a crime. The law says a mother who can't care for her baby can't be prosecuted for leaving her child in a safe place, like a hospital, a fire station. We could argue it extends to law firms. We could, but that only applies when the child is less than three days old. That baby is older than that. I am opening up a trial command center for Tom. One of us needs to get back to the party. We didn't invite everyone here so they could give business to each other. I'd rather go mingle. Believe me, we've got a big problem. This is all our security footage. Clearly, this baby didn't come in through our lobby. So where did it come from? The only other way in is through the back entrance, and you need a key card. Great. So one of our employees abandoned him. Tell the jury what you saw the night of the murder. I saw a cab driver get shot by that man. Do you recognize this guy? No, I've never seen him before. Could he have been out there? I don't know, maybe. But after the cab, he pulled the gun on me. I just ran. I didn't see or hear anything. What did you see in the cab? I saw a fight going on, a bad one, between the driver and the defendant. I tried to call 911 for help, but my cell phone didn't get service. Then the defendant shot the cabbie to death. Merry Christmas. Welcome to every trial lawyer's worst nightmare. Tom has three hours to cross a witness with no ammo and no time to prepare. We are going to dig into this witness for him. Now, usually you'd have weeks to do this. Today we are doing this on the fly and on a deadline. Courts close at 5 p.m. Luther, can you hear me? Yes. The package just arrived. Good. The lapel mic will broadcast what happens in court back to us. I will talk to you through the earpiece. Sit close to Tom so you can relay my messages. Do not get caught. What we're doing might be legal or it might not be. With this judge would be better to say sorry than ask for permission. Are we ready? Let's go. Please tell the jury why you were in the alley that night. I was at a club on Sunset in Alvarado. I left at about 1.15. What time did you get to the alley? Maybe five minutes later. I took the alley behind Alvarado because it's a shortcut to my apartment. I live on Ewing Street. His route checks out on the map. Send an investigator to make sure he could have made the trip in the time he says. How many of you paralegals are sober? No, really. If I had to ask one of you to drive me home, how many could? Okay, six of you just earned Christmas bonuses. Go help Luther. Your ability to intimidate 25-year-olds is still impressive. Judge Madison, good to see you. Where's your husband? Home. Oh, you know how he feels about you, Ron. At least it's mutual. <laughs> Actually, I thought you felt the same way. Well, as long as you keep inviting me, I'm going to keep coming. We know whoever abandoned the baby works for us. The handwriting looks feminine, so check off the guys. That's 23 women. Eight are out of town, and I walked in with these two. That leaves 13. A hungry... He's a change? What? I'm guessing hungry. Whoever left him bought this at a grocery store in Los Feliz. How many of our employees live in Los Feliz? One. Eva, the new receptionist. Luther wants to know if there's anything about Nick's appearance that might help get a read on him. Yeah. When he first walked in, I noticed he was wearing an off-the-rack suit. designer shoes. He lives one block from Steve's crummy apartment, but his watch costs more than Steve's rent. Now, there's got to be a story there. Just got a haircut, so he wants to make a good impression. He's confident, conversational, makes eye contact. The jury loves him. They do? Already? Jurors judge fast. First impressions are everything. This guy makes a great one. The DA probably told him to dress down for court. I would have. Why would you give up your son, Eva? He's not my son. He's my neighbor's son. I'm sorry. You took this baby? I didn't know what else to do. But my neighbor, Kelly, she's on drugs, and she leaves him alone all the time. 
It's awful. This morning, I saw her leave, and the baby was crying for hours. And she never came back. I had to do something. I had to save him. Anybody would have. You kidnapped him and burglarized the apartment. Two felonies. Eva, would you excuse us for a minute? Be nice. She thought she was doing the right thing. We're not harboring a kidnapper. We have to turn her in. Let's at least try to get the mother down here. Reunite her with her baby. Try to save Eva from prison. No, if the mother is as bad as Eva says, giving the baby back would put him in danger. I don't want that on my conscience. Yes, I have a conscience. If we call the police, Eva will be arrested. And the baby could end up in foster care. You want that on your conscience? <sighs> Find a doctor to evaluate the baby. Preferably not one we represented in a malpractice suit. Keep security on Eva. She can't leave. And dig into the mother. Keep it all quiet. Don't let anyone out there know what's going on. We're now criminal conspirators in a kidnapping. What a great party. This man, Steve Gerard, was the killer. Are you sure? It was him. I'm absolutely sure. Mr. Nicholson? Cross? I gotta start. Do we have anything we can use against this guy? Luther says they're still trying, but they haven't come up with anything yet. Mr. Nicholson, are you going to cross-examine this witness or not? We just gotta stall long enough to give Luther time to find something. The doctor says there are no signs of abuse. He's a little malnourished, but otherwise fine. Has the mother reported the baby missing yet? No, and I can't get her on the phone. Well, keep trying. Send someone out to her apartment if you have to. We need to find this woman. I'm ready to start my cross, Your Honor. How did you know this was going to trial today, Mr. Allen? Have you been following it in the paper? Objection. Relevance. Objection? I'm trying to get the jury out of here for the holidays. I'm sorry, folks. I'm trying. Objection overruled. How is Tom going to get him to tell the truth? He's not going to just admit he's lying. He's going to get Nick to commit to a story, catch an inconsistency, and show the jury he's a liar. I heard about the trial on the radio. Have you ever seen a picture of my client in the paper, on the news? No. Has the DA ever shown you a picture of the defendant and asked if he was the guilty party? No. The last time I saw your client was when I saw him pull the trigger and kill the cab driver. I see your name isn't here in the police report. Like I said, I couldn't get through to them. But you didn't stick around to talk to the cops either. Why not? I was scared. And I know what can happen when you testify against a killer. But I couldn't let him walk just because I was afraid. That's why I'm here now. The witness who just showed up today, I'd say the DA prepped him very well. I want proof that this guy couldn't see anything that night. Get me weather reports for the night of the murder. And check out the lighting conditions in the alley. Go. Go now. Were you walking home from a club when you saw this incident? Yes. Do you have anything to drink? No, I don't drink. I've been sober three years. How's your eyesight? Okay, I guess. You guess? When was the last time you had your eyes checked? Last year, maybe. But look, I can read the headline of the newspaper that guy's reading in the back row. It looks like the Lakers blew another close one. 94-91. Getting a little help here, Luther. Trying to stall with this guy, and he's killing me. The doctor didn't find any evidence of abuse, Eva. That's great for the baby, but it's bad for you. It means you had no excuse for taking him. Well, there are other kinds of abuse. Kelly was never home. She left him alone all the time. Then why didn't you call the police? I didn't plan this, you know? It, it just happened. I was just trying to do the right thing. And maybe you did. But you definitely did it the wrong way. I know. I'm sorry. I just thought that you guys always know how to handle things and help people. I thought you would know what to do. This crime took place around 1.30 in the morning. Are you in the habit of staying out late? Lisa, you know, Tommy 
got something he can use. Alan testified that he could see everything. He couldn't have. There was no moon the night of the murder, and the streetlights in that alley were out. The city sent a repair team the following week. Plus, it was trash day. There were dumpsters out there. Tell Tom to lock the guy down on where he was when he saw the shooting. Tell Tom to be precise. Luther says to ask him where he was standing exactly when he saw the cat and the murder. Tell me, where exactly were you standing when you saw this crime? I was almost down to Berkeley Avenue. I was still in the alley. I stopped next to the back door of this Chinese place when I saw the gun. Was anyone else there? Not that I noticed. What could you see from where you were standing? The gas station across the street. Take a look at this picture. Is this the point of view of the alley you had that night? Yeah, it looks like it. How far away was the cab? Maybe 30 feet. Any objects obstructing your view? It was trash day. There would have been a dumpster down in the restaurant. The dumpster wasn't in my way. It was on the other side of the alley. All right. Maybe you had a clear line of sight. But how could you have seen anything in the dark? All the street lights were broken. And there was no moon out that night. Are you telling us that in the dead of night, with no lights, you can ID a man from 30 feet? The dome light inside the cab was on. It's like a spotlight on both their faces. the mother's house but she wasn't there none of the neighbors have seen Kelly since she left this morning she clearly doesn't care about the baby I saw that her mailbox was broken and letters were spilling out some of her mail was on the ground so it's not a crime to look at it based on the letters I did some research on the mother Kelly Wright went to rehab this year but she left early I checked court files she and her husband split up three months ago he lives up north Alex based on these divorce pleadings I'd say he's the stable one Lives in Sacramento, works construction, no criminal records. Mothers almost always get custody, deserving or not. I left a paralegal at the apartment. Kelly just showed up. She still hasn't reported her kid missing? No. So what's the plan? Invite her to the party. What? Well, like you said, we need to find out if she's a bad mother and whether Abe here should go to foster care. Abe, his name's David. Really? He looks like an Abe to me. We need to settle this thing quietly, or Eva's going to prison along with us. Ron, your guests are starting to wonder where you are. <laughs> you don't knock? He's not mine. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. He's a client's nephew. Really? Which client? God, I love catching you in lies. You're running low on Dom. My direct examination of this witness took 15 minutes. Mr. Nicholson has kept him on the stand for almost two hours. His client is going to get convicted. Delaying the inevitable won't stop it. Mr. Nicholson, do you have any more real questions? Oh, they're all real. See, this is what happens when they drop an eyewitness on the defense out of nowhere. Now, I have the right to conduct a full and complete cross-examination. It's 3 o'clock now. You have one more hour, but I'm looking at this jury, and they're hating you for keeping them here. The mother just got here. We've got a paralegal watching him in the EPR. Why? Why isn't the mother with him? She's not ready to be with him yet, Ron. You'll see. You come in my house and you take my son! Ladies, please, let's all be rational, all right? Eva brought David here because she was concerned. We are all concerned. We just want to figure out what's in his best interest and yours. I am his mother. I am in his best interest. Where is he? Where is David? He's safe. We have someone watching him. Kelly, you have a drug problem. Maybe David needs more than you can give him. Who the hell asked you, you skinny bitch? Let's all 
Just calm down. You need to give me my son now, or I am going to tell everyone that you kidnapped him. Mr. Allen, you claim that after the shooting, you tried to call for help. I did call. I couldn't get through. Are you implying that I didn't? Check my cell records. Not implying anything. I'm just saying that if you were busy looking down at your phone, you couldn't have seen everything that happened in the cab. So when exactly were you looking down at your phone? Where's Ron? I haven't seen him. Did you see that baby? Did it look like Ron? So where's the mother now? My office. We have to separate them. Kelly wants to press charges against Eva and us. Sure, and we're liable too. We're employers. At worst, we're conspirators. At best, we're accomplices. You want to be the one to fire her? Look, we have to protect our firm. If Eva gets prosecuted, I'll pay for her defense. And of course, ours. Eva, I'm sorry, but as long as Kelly's threatening to press charges, we need legal separation. That means you're fired. We'll try to talk Kelly out of involving the police. You don't need to lose your job and go to prison. It's Christmas. Stay here. If we're going to mediate this, we need the father's permission. I just spoke with him. He gave us power of attorney, but Kelly needs representation, too. We've got a lobby full of lawyers. I'm sure we can find somebody willing to earn a quick fee. We need a judge, too. Someone who handles mediation. Judge Madison could do it. We've got to get somebody else. There isn't. I checked. What's going on with you? You've been avoiding her all night. Did you sleep with her or something? Judge Madison was the first Mrs. Trott. Awfully nice watch, Mr. Allen. Yes. So? How could you afford it? What do you do for a living? I'm self-employed. As a consultant. Consultant? It's pretty broad. What is that? <laughs> well, the service I provide varies depending on what each client needs. Tell Tom to move in on motive. Maybe there really was a robbery that night. If he doesn't have a real job, maybe he killed the cab driver for money. Worth asking. How could you afford the watch, Mr. Allen? Did you buy it? Is it a gift? Or are you a thief? Objection! Mr. Nicholson is badgering the witness. Sustain. Did you murder the cab driver? No. This really was a robbery gone wrong, wasn't it? Objection! Ask That's and answer! Enough. That's why you came here. Argumentative! You, you your have crime to stop That's else. enough. I didn't kill the cab driver. He did. I need a moment with my client. Pretend like we're talking about something. I just need a minute to think. You okay? No. Do you really think he killed the driver? Honestly, no. He's too cool. Why would he come here if he did? I'm just trying to rattle. Your Honor, I was wondering if we could take a brief recess. No, keep going. Like you said, let's get out for the holidays. I really need to take a break. I need to use the restroom. Go ahead. We'll all wait. Well, this guy's got all the angles covered. Yes, and right now he's coming across like a perfect witness. I'll keep him talking, but you have got to find something fast. We're doing everything we can, Tom, but I don't know what to tell you. Don't make a liar out of me, Luther. I promised this kid I would get him home for Christmas. Yes. Well, maybe you shouldn't have made that promise. Get out of my way. Get out of my way! I'm going to find David, and then I'm leaving. No, you're not. We have to mediate custody of your son. Yeah, mediate this. I'm calling the cops. There's the phone right there. Go ahead. You ready to take a drug test? The police will give you one. 
No, they won't. I haven't done anything wrong. You left your baby alone for hours this morning. So if you call the police now, let me tell you what's going to happen. They're going to investigate you, and you'll go to jail for child endangerment. You can have Eva arrested for kidnapping, but you might just end up sharing a cell. Or you can agree to mediation. Okay. Where did you go when you left the scene of the crime? You already asked that. I went home, remember? Mr. Nicholson, it's getting close to last call. Here, wrap it up. No, not yet. We're close. Great witness. You come forward until today. No criminal record. He's got money. No visible means of income. Lisa, tell Tom to ask Nick if he's ever been arrested. Luther says to ask Nick if he's ever been arrested. Mr. Allen, have you ever been arrested? No, I've never been arrested. <laughs> Pay attention, people. You have just heard a man commit perjury. Lisa, are there two men in suits sitting together in the gallery? Uh, one's athletic, short hair, the other's a nerd, arrogant. But his suit is nicer than the other guy. Yeah, exactly. What are you, Luther, psychic? If I'm right, one of them is assistant U.S. attorney, the other's an FBI agent. But I need you to confirm it. Come out here to play host, or are you going to disappear again? We've got an issue in the back, a domestic dispute. The parents want to settle it between themselves, but we need a judge to mediate today. Uh, asking me to work at a Christmas party is pretty bold, even for you. Look, one of our employees finds herself at the center of an unfortunate situation. Technically, she might have inadvertently violated the kidnapping statute. What? She's a good person. She didn't mean to do it. The mother let the baby alone. We think to get drugs. Listen to what she has to say. A quick, quiet resolution is in everyone's best interest. Trust me. Per Chapter 11 of the California Family Law Code, custody disputes are first subject to private mediation. Do both parties have counsel? Mrs. Wright does. Mr. Wright is in transit and has given TNT and G power of attorney to act in his stead. Can I talk? Judge, they're trying to steal my baby. No one is stealing your baby. This is a legal way to determine the best living situation for David. But the court already gave me custody. It doesn't sound like you're doing a very good job, Kelly. Everyone's saying I'm such a horrible mother. Why doesn't anyone care that my son was kidnapped? I was going to give this subpoena to the FBI. Which one of you guys could take it for me? Thanks, guys. You were right, Luther. Okay. All hell is about to break loose. God, I wish I was there. Lisa, tell Tom to ask this guy what his NATIS number is. Luther says to ask Nick what his NATIS number is. Is Luther sure about this? Mr. Allen, tell me something. What's your NATIS number? Objection! Move for the court to be cleared! So ordered, Mr. Nicholson, not one more word. Clear the courtroom. What just happened? If this witness has a NATIS number, means he's a federal snitch. This is actually a question of life and death. Mr. Nicholson wants to ask Mr. Allen if he's a federal informant. That can get Mr. Allen killed. Mr. Nicholson should go to prison if he does and that. And you should lose your bar card. By law, you were supposed to tell me if the witness is receiving benefits from the government. You didn't do that. Mr. Allen didn't get anything for testifying in this case. He's a federal witness, not a state CI. He's involved in an ongoing investigation of the Cali cartel. 
The FBI didn't even want him to come forward. Then why did he? Because he saw your client commit murder and he wanted justice. Give me a break. He's auditioning. He's trying to show you what a great witness he can be, so you put him on the payroll as a state snitch, too. He's lying. No, he's not. He lied in court. I asked him if he'd ever been arrested. He said no. But most CIs get recruited after they've been busted. Has this guy ever been arrested or not? Yes, Mr. Allen has a drug arrest, but it was expunged. I didn't ask that. I asked if he had ever been arrested. He denied it. He perjured himself. Now, there's no way this court can believe he's telling the truth about my client. Steve Gerard is an innocent man. Okay, okay. Now, can you two work something out? A plea deal, something. Uh, murder two. Max 10. No, drop the case or I finish my cross and expose this guy as a snitch and a liar. Hold on, hold on. Now, you cannot expose an informant. If I don't, my client dies. You've seen him. He's barely holding on in jail. He will not survive prison. Plus, he's innocent. I will not let him get wrongly convicted. If you expose Mr. Allen, I will hold you in contempt. And I will make sure you're prosecuted criminally. Lawyers aren't supposed to make promises they can't keep. Now, I made a promise to my client that he wouldn't go back to jail. Just like I'm betting you made a promise to the feds that Nick Allen wouldn't get exposed. So, let's bring back the jury. See who gets to keep their promise. I want the cop! Kelly, listen to me. You have a beautiful baby boy. That's right, he is mine! Being a mother is a huge responsibility. Do you have kids? No. Then who the hell are you to tell me that? I know being a parent is about sacrifice. That's why I could never do it. But clearly, you want to do the best thing for David. If you could just get through rehab and finish this time, you could be a great mom. Mr. Trot is willing to pay for it. Sorry? Shut up, Ron. The father's coming, right? Yes, he's flying down now. The father will take care of David while you get the treatment you need. Mr. Trot will help pay any expenses for David's father. No, I do not want him living with his father. Are you worried your ex-husband wouldn't be a good dad? No, no, I... But... But in a divorce, we make choices out of spite. We say and do things we don't really mean. We regret them later, but you can't afford to make that mistake. You have David to consider. If you go into rehab, I'll arrange for regular visitations with you and David. Eventually, you could regain joint custody. You'll be able to live with David again. Agreed? Um, but can I please see David now? Rehire the receptionist. I was going to. Mm, shut up, Ron. Remind the witness that he's still under oath. Mr. Allen. Are you now, or have you ever been... Don't finish that question! Your Honor, the state... The state moves to dismiss the charges against Mr. Gerard. Good job, everybody. Thank you. Good job. Merry, Merry Christmas. Charges are dismissed. The jury is excused. It's over. It's over. Lisa booked you on a flight back to Pittsburgh. It's our treat. Come on, you got a plan to catch. Thank you. Thank you so much. Would you mind giving me a ride? I really don't want to take a cab.
heard he was much better than last year's. Next time, bring your husband. His family, <laughs> in a way. This firm is your family, Ron. It always has been. Why didn't things work out between you two? Because she was a better lawyer than me. I hate that. <laughs> I owe you a present this year. I got to miss this party. No small thought, no smoothing. That's gift enough for me. Congratulations, Tom. You managed to miss the party three years in a row. You should have seen Tom in court. He was awesome. Awesome? What's so awesome? He crossed one witness. We saved the baby. What baby? Nicholson! Your client killed that cab driver. You got a guilty guy off by gaming the system. No, I didn't. Nick Allen is the one who's trying to game the system. Look, he wanted another source of income. That's what today was about. Nick Allen didn't ask for anything, and he never got anything. He truly just wanted to see justice done. What, am I supposed to believe a snitch? DAs don't pick their witnesses, Tom. But you can pick your clients. Pick better next time. Merry Christmas.